So in statistics, we have a whole bunch of different terms, and I'm going to try to introduce you to those. That's why I like this one. My math teacher said I was average. How mean? I <laughs> guess we got the mean. <sighs> okay, so it is all about interpreting data. So we want to take a look at what kind of data we have and how can we make some conclusions about it. So for example, we can be analyzing you know, the age of the students in a class, or it could be lots of different things. We're going to see tons of examples. But let's start with the first one. We're just going to fly through a bunch of definitions. You might have heard them before. A lot of people have, but just to make sure, mean, that's the average. That's this average here. That's why that joke is there. Now, the kind of notation we use for this, we tend to use two different symbols. Um, your calculator sometimes uses this symbol right here, or we can use this one here, which is uh, Greek symbol mu. This is a common one here. I'll just write a little bit bigger like this. There we go. This right here is a common notation that we use, so that's a really important one, okay? So this is the idea. To find the average, what we do is we count up all the values, and then we divide by the number of terms. So let me show you what I mean sort of old school way, sort of by hand here. So let's say we want the mean here. Well, what would I do? The mean, I'll say, so this one right here, mu, equals, let's see, it would be 2 plus 2.5 plus 4.8 plus 6.1 plus 0 0.5. And I would divide that by the number of terms. So 1, 2, 3, 4, there are five terms. This is how we do the average. Now, of course, you can get out your calculator to do it. So let's do that, just in case you felt like it. So you can say 2 plus 2.5 plus, let's see, 4.8, whoops, 4.8 plus 6.1 plus 0.5. So 15.9 over 5. All right. So that's the exact value. If I want to find the approximate value, then I just press this divided by 5. And it gives me 3.18. So there we go. So that means the mean, in this case here then, is 3.18. That's how we do the mean. Now that's a generic way to do it. We have a, uh, sorry, that's a specific way. It's not very helpful. We're going to see a better version of that in a little bit. So we also have something called the median. The median is just the middle number if you write them ordered. So this is the pro tip for you is that when you do the median, you need to write the different terms in order. So from smallest to largest. So for example, if I was trying to solve this one right here and say, what's the median? Well, it would help if I wrote them in order. So 0 0.5 is the smallest, then comes 2, then comes 2.1, then what, 4.8, and then 6.1. So there's one, two, three, four, there's five terms. So what do I do? The median will be the middle one. By the way, if there's two different terms like that, then uh, you take the middle in between them. So let's say it was like six terms, you would take you know, the midpoint between the two in the middle. In this case, there's only one middle term, so we're fine. So the median is just 2.1. That's how we do that one. Okay, so that's the median. So, so far we've done mean. Mean is the average. We've got the median, which is the middle number. Now we've got something called the mode. That's just the most common one. So whatever happens most often. If you have a big table that tells you like the frequency of things and it's the one that has the largest frequency. Um, and it could the whole thing could actually be a group as well. So we call it the modal group. All right, percentiles. Those are really important here. Percentile is when we say like X percent of the data is below this. So for example, let's say uh, you're told you're in the 38th percentile. Well, that means that 38% of students are below you. Or you could say that, you know, the opposite is true. So that would be what, 62% uh, of students have a grade higher than you. So something like that. That's a way to look at it. 90th percentile, for example, this means that 90% are below you. Or you could say that, you know, 10% are higher than you. All right. Quartiles, those are really important. Uh, we're going to be using these quite a bit, actually. So we're going to call this Q1 for the first quartile. We're going to have something called Q2 second quartile, we're going to say Q3 is the third quartile. See, if you think about 100 and you split it up into four even pieces, that's why they're called quartiles, because it's into four, uh, or into quarters, you could think of it that way. So the first quarter, that's the 25th percentile. So in other words, uh, here, if I go like this right here, that means that, you know, 25% of the data is below this particular number here, whatever that is. Whatever Q1 is, let's say it was like 15 centimeters. That would tell you that, oh, 25% of the data is below that. Well, then we have this Q2, which is the second quartile, right? Because that's the, you know, two, 
times 25%. That's the second quartile, which is the 50th percentile. And we have another word for this one right here. We call that the median. Because remember, that's the that's actually a really useful one here. This is the median. Because that's the middle number. So that tells you actually something about the median, the middle value here. Now we've got the third quartile, okay, so 75th percentile. So it just helps to know that Q3 is a 75th percentile. Q1 is the 25th percentile. Doing okay so far? We're going through a lot of definitions, I know. We're almost done. I like this one. It's my mode not to be mean. Uh. All right, we have something called interquartile range. See, in statistics, we like to not just look at what the what is the mean or what's the average. We like to say, like, how much are things spread out? Because you might have an average, but things, if they're really, really spread out, it's, it's not a very helpful average. So we have some way of measuring the spread of the data. Now, the technical term is called dispersion. Um, at least in mathematics. In physics, we have another word. Well, when waves are spread, we also say there's a dispersion in waves. But here we mean dispersion as in the, the spread of the data here. We have something called the interquartile range. This is on your formula booklet. It says it's just the third quartile minus the first quartile. So this is actually on your formula booklet. Yay. Okay, so that's really nice to know. So, so here I'll say formula, formula, I'll just write like this, booklet. Oops. So let's write that down so that way you know this is on your formula booklet. Hooray, you don't have to memorize this, but I don't think it's so, so hard. Here's an example. You have a data set, 25th percentile is 42, 50th percentile 61, the 75th percentile, let's say, is 79. And the question is, what's the IQR? What's the interquartile range? And just to show that you're, you know, to show someone that you know what you're talking about, you can write down the equation, Q3 minus Q1. We didn't need the 50th percentile or the median. We didn't need it. All we needed to do is just use these numbers here. So we have Q3, which is just 79, minus Q1, which is just 42. And so let's see, 9 minus 2 is 7. 7 minus 4 is 3. Oops, I just got to write it nicely. So it's 37. That's it for interquartile range. It's actually not so bad. So this tells you some idea about the spread of the data. All right. Now, last is the formal version of the average. Okay, so this is, we've got this nice big equation right here. Um, I want to show you how it is that it looks on your formula booklet here. So they write it like this with the x bar like this right here. Okay, and they write it like this. This is the x bar. But that just means average. Okay, that just means the mean. They write this, this sigma notation here. Some people get really messed up by this just because they don't really know what to do with this. So I'll explain it in a second here. Let me just write it down. Fi, xi all that over n. They even tell you that n uh, is going to be what? The sum. Oops. I'm going to make a nice equal sign here. Plus 1. I'll go up to k. Of, well, all the terms, so it'll be fi. There we go. What does this mean? A lot of people, when they see this equation, they just sort of want to cry. I just want to explain it. Hopefully, it'll make some sense in a second here. Let me just spend a second explaining what this means. So, what does this mean? The sum, that means add up, right? That means the sum, okay? Which means add up the terms. So this just means then you add up all the terms from 1 until you're supposed to stop, until k. It just tells you basically start where you're supposed to start, finish where you're supposed to finish. Count up all the terms. Do you notice what this says to do? It says multiply the frequency, that's what f is, times the x value. So whatever the x value is, there's going to be like a number of them. Maybe there's like five of them that are uh, x equals 4. So you go 5 times 4. And then you'd add up you know, the next x value, whatever that is, times its frequency and so on. And you divide that by n. n is the number of terms. And this right here, this is just the number of terms. So you can think of it then, you just add up all the frequencies. That's what this means. Add up all the frequencies, because that will tell you how many terms there are. I'll explain that with an example in a second here, okay? So I'll just show you how to formally do it. So this, although the notation may look crazy, it is just doing what this example here I showed you before. You add up all the terms and divide by the number of terms. The thing is, what if you had a whole bunch of these? What if you have like 10 twos? You don't feel like going 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2. Instead, we just say, ah, there's 10 twos. So we say 10 times 2. 
and then we you know do the next one whatever this is maybe there's like a 11 2.5 so we go okay there's 11 times 2.5 and so on so actually what we've just done here this is just a formal mathematical version of saying do just that multiply every number by its frequency and add up all those combinations of those divide it by the number of terms there are let's see if it'll make sense so here's an example here Got the height of dinosaurs i think dinosaurs are awesome so the height of dinosaurs are given by this so h is between 0 and 10 meters there's five of them height between 10 and 14 there's two of them 14 to 18 there's one and 18 to 22 there's two how do i find the mean well, there's one way I want to show you first of all is that uh, when you have a range like this right here, I would say this, choose the middle, choose the middle point in all these ones, okay? Choose the middle points. So in other words, I'm going to redo this table to make it a little bit nicer here. So I'll say H. So between 0 and 10, that'll be 5 because that's way easier to work with because I don't really want to work with the rest of it. So I'll, I'll call that one 5. Between 10 and 14, the middle point is 12. 14 to 18, the middle point is 16. This one here, the middle point is 20. Now there's five of those, there's two of those, there's one of those, there's two of those. So how do I do this then? This is the frequency. I'm going to use that equation, really. I'm going to say, all right, look, the mean is going to be, I'm going to add up all the terms. I'm going to add up every frequency times every x. I'll start by the first one. I'll finish when I'm done. I'll divide it by n where n is the sum of all the frequencies. So let's let's use this, because I think this can look really complicated until you actually see it in action. So there's five, but there's five of them like that. So I'm going to go five times five. Does that make sense? Because i got to do, there's five, there's a height of five, but there's five of those. It's like saying five plus five plus five plus five plus five. So that's five times five. Plus, well, there's two twelve, so I'll say fine, two times twelve. Plus, let's see, there's 1 times 16, so there's just one of those at 16, and there's two of them at 20. Whoops, that's not 20, that's a 2. 20, there we go. I'm going to divide all those by, let's see, how many dinosaurs are there in total? Well, there's 5 plus 2 plus 1 plus 2. This is the frequencies, right? So does that make sense why it's 5 plus 2 plus 1 plus 2? And we've actually done this. Do you see where we even said n is just the sum of all the frequencies? Look, didn't I add up all the frequencies? Look, that's what that equation said. n is add up all the frequencies. So if I do it like this, oops, uh, then I can just do it on my calculator then. Well, 5 times 5 is 25. 2 times 12 is 24. 1 times 16 is 16. 2 times 20 is 40. All that divided by, let's see, that would be uh, 4, 9, that would be 10. All right. Um, I could say this one right here, let's see, this right here adds up to, what would that be, 40, that'd be 80, 105 over 10, I think it is. So I'll take my 105, divide it by 10, I could do that on my calculator, or I could just know that I move my decimal over by 1, so I'd say 10.5 meters. So therefore, I could state without a doubt that the mean is equal to approximately, well actually exactly equal to 10.5 meters. That is the average height of a dinosaur according to this at least. This is the average height. Okay, so I hope that right there helped. It should make sense. Look, there's lots of them that are around five. There's lots of them that are heavier, but not many that are less. So hopefully that makes some sense here. Okay, so when could you actually use this? When is this useful? Well, we do this so much of everyday life. We've got biology, psychology, I mean, lots of studies that we do, you know, if you want to find out the averages, how people respond to things, biology, the efficacy of, um, of uh, drugs, for example, of drug treatments, like for example with COVID-19, all these things, we use stats for this. Sports, if you're looking at the analysis of how well sports teams do, or even you know individual results. Environmental studies and global warming, all this stuff, I mean, so much is statistics. So this is just an introduction, and we'll go into much deeper in other videos.